So I'm going to give you a quick overview of the unit plan template here. And um, I've started an example of what um, this might look like. So in this unit overview, the title is, What Does the Data Say? So this is a unit for seventh grade math that will take about a week where students are learning about um, how to answer questions about um, data and how to use data to make predictions and how to select samples from a population so that they can efficiently um, make conclusions about data. So in my uh, unit summary here, I just wrote students will explore real world data sets to answer engaging questions. In this unit, they will learn how to find data sets, identify variables, select random samples, calculate measures of central tendency and variability, and make inferences about the population based on these statistics. And I've selected the seventh grade um, standards here that are rela related to statistics and about um, population sampling. Um, and so these are the uh, standards that are relevant to this unit. So then out of that, I pull out the primary performance indicators. So the things that um, I'm going to be measuring the students on in the summative assessment for this lesson. So one, um, and I'll scroll down and show you the summative assessment here. So the summative assessment, I've used the GRASPs framework. So the goal in this summative assessment is that they're going to determine the number of old and new trees on a Christmas tree farm. And I got this from a um, lesson uh, plan um, from, uh, uh, let's see, where did I get that from? This is from uh, University of Nottingham and UC Berkeley. So um, this is uh, what they, they would get this, this map of a tree farm and they would have to figure out, um, you know, the triangles are the new trees, the circles are the old trees. So rather than counting every single one of these, they would have to determine a strategy for um, figuring out how many new and old trees there are. So um, ideally they would figure out how to take a sample, um, a random sample, so they wouldn't want to just take like the first row because that's not random. So they'd have to find a way of selecting um, a random number of, um, items in here. And then they would do their calculations and then they would multiply it times um, the rest of the, the um, numbers in the uh, population to be able to determine um, what the numbers are for the whole population based on that sample. So the role that they're taking is that they're the business manager for the tree farm and the audience is the owner of the tree farm. So they're providing advice to the owner of the tree farm. So the situation is that the owner needs to know how many old tree, Christmas trees he has on his farm to be able to plan for which ones to cut this year and how many more he needs to plant. So the product that they, uh, the students are going to create is a presentation showing the count of the old and the new trees with an explanation of how they, um, they determine these values. And then the standards are, are cited up above here. So this is what their, their final assessment for this unit is going to be. And I would fill out this um, uh, rubric here to determine how I would score them. So I would list the indicators that I have listed above here um, to uh, uh, rank them on those. So here are the primary performance indicators. The first one is that you can select, execute, and justify a sampling strategy. So not only do they have to be able to select a, a sampling strategy, they have to then do it, and then they have to explain why they chose that sampling strategy. And then they can also calculate the mean, median, and mode from a given data set and explain what those numbers represent. So in this case, they aren't calculating those for the um, tree, um, uh, for the tree farm, um, but perhaps I would give them um, some, uh, data from other years where then they would calculate over the course of years how many um, old and new trees have they had. And then you can calculate the range, mean absolute deviation, and interquartile range of a given data set and explain what those numbers represent. So then they're also going to figure out how much that data varies. So um, is it the same amount of trees year over year that are old and new, or does that vary, and how much does that vary? 
and then you can make predictions about a population based on data from random samples. So they will then be able to use their data that, that they've analyzed over those years and determine, okay, so this year we have this many old trees and this many new trees, but we predict that next year we'll have this much. So then I have some other supporting performance indicators that um, we'll be talking about, but I won't be formally assessing these. These won't be in the, the formative assessment, the summative assessment for the unit. So you can explain how samples can be biased. You can provide examples of how the same data can be used to support multiple assertions. And you can perform calculations manually and with technology tools. So these are all things that we're going to be looking at in this unit. Um, we're going to be looking at some uh, real data sets and practicing answering questions about them. Um, so the understandings that I want them to have that are transferable across context, places, and times are that how you select samples from a population can bias the results of your calculations, leading to inaccurate conclusions. So we'll, we'll look at um, data from like a school where we could say, okay, well, if, we, if our sample is one class, what's wrong with that? Um, you know, that if the students are all in the same class, there are things that are similar about them that are going to be different than the rest of the school. So that's not really a random sample, that's a biased sample. And how is that going to change the predictions that we make um, based on our, our um, uh, data about that sample? Um, we'll also look at um, some, uh, like, uh, I, I found some data sets that we're going to look at. Um, let's see, like FIFA complete date player data set. So over the last, I don't know how many years, um, this data set has every player in the World Cup um, uh, finals and all of the data about them. Um, this data set has the top streamers on Twitch. Um, so I'm sure there are a lot of students that would be interested to see that. Um, but these are the top streamers. It doesn't represent every streamer on Twitch. So already we have um, this is not, our population is not Twitch, it's the top streamers of Twitch. So then any sample that we take out of there, either it could be biased by the way we select it, or it could be random. And we'll talk about some ways of randomly sampling out of that data set. Um, we'll also look at the International Food Security Database um, to see how um, how people uh, have access to food throughout the world. So we're going to play with a lot of those data sets to um, really build their skills and their understanding of these um, things, of the things that they know. So we've got some vocabulary. They need to be familiar and um, be able to use all of these terms. Some concepts are that multiple random samples provide a better prediction of the, of the population than a single or a non-random sample. And we're going to try that. We're going to look at like a, a whole data set and calculate the statistics on the population. And then we'll take some random samples and we will look at how close each of those random samples are to the whole population. And then what happens when we take multiple random samples? When we take multiples and then we, we average those together, we'll find that that's much closer to the actual population than any single random sample or uh, even more close than a non-random sample. And then um, they should also um, understand um, measures of central tendency um, and that they um, are helpful in describing the middle point of a data set and that measures of variability describe how similar or different the data points are from the whole. And then what I want students to be able to do, these are the things that they need to be able to do to meet those performance indicators. So they should be able to select a sampling strategy, they should be able to select multiple random samples, they should be able to differentiate between numerical and categorical variables, and these are not necessarily all the things that are going to be assessed, but these are the kinds of skills that they need to have to be able to do the final assessment. So I hope this helps to kind of um, explain this, this whole section in here. The rest of these are very similar to what we've done on other lesson plans, like the rubric, um, you're familiar with that, the grasps format of the summative assessment task, you're familiar with that. There should be some sort of entry level assessment at the beginning of the unit to help identify students' strengths and weaknesses and their prior knowledge um, that are going to be assessed in this unit. So um, I want to find out already what do they already know about um, 
population samples and um, statistics. Um, so I can connect that to their prior knowledge, but what is what are their strengths or their weaknesses there? So that maybe I can do some strategic matching up of students in, in partners or in small groups. And then I also want to determine some of the prerequisite knowledge, like that they can um, that they can determine a, medi uh, a median and a mode and a mean, that they know the calculations for doing those. Um, and then there should be something that's going to kind of hook them in there. So um, I was going to use the um, the uh, data set here on the top streamers on Twitch um, to help answer some questions that, you know, what do the top streamers do? What kind of content is most popular? Um, you know, what time of day do they um, post videos and things like that. So that kind of gets them hooked into, you know, we can ask a lot of questions and if we've got this data, we can pull up um, with statistics, we can pull up that data um, to answer those questions. And we don't necessarily want to look at every single Twitch account to figure that out. We want to be more efficient. So we, we're going to use samples of the data to, to calculate that. So then in this section here, I would list out those learning targets and that are that are up here. So these learning targets up here, the primary performance indicators, sometimes you'll use those, see those words used interchangeably. Um, so a performance indicator is something that the, the, the student demonstrates, something that they can do. Um, and so that's also a learning target. What is the target of this lesson, the target of instruction? So then I list those out here, and then I also provide what kind of formative assessment am I going to be using to check in on those throughout the unit. So I want to kind of see throughout the unit some ways of, of you know, I might throw in an exit ticket that has like a little scenario on one day and ask them to describe how they would select a random sample from that population. So that might be my formative assessment um, on one day about sampling strategies. And then I describe what are the actual learning experiences? What are the things that they're going to do? So like on the first day, um, we'll be exploring that Twitch data set together. Um, on the second day, um, they're gonna um, look at some other data sets. Um, we're gonna fill out some worksheets um, about uh, that guide them through um, those data sets. There'll be some little tutorial videos, some Edpuzzle videos, which are also going to be formative assessment. So I'm going to be just kind of listing these things out. I'm not going to do it in a lot of detail like I do in a lesson plan, just kind of giving a broad overview here. And then list out the resources that, that you're using. And then I want to put in opportunities here for reflection. Where am I going to put that in? so that it's happening throughout and at the end of the unit um, and it incorporates goal setting. So I might have at the beginning after the we introduce the unit and we look at that um, that Twitch data set, I might have the students write themselves a goal. What is something that you want to know and how are you going to answer that question? And then we'll work throughout the unit, um, you know, maybe a couple times they do a reflection on how close am I to answering that question? What skills do I now have? So the students can reflect on that and I can see that reflection as well. And then I also wanna plan in here some opportunities for teacher reflection. So I would put in here, you know, that um, I would be looking at the Edpuzzle um, questions and looking at, um, you know, how well are the students um, comprehending the, the concepts that, that we're working on. I would also put in there um, some places that I want to reflect on, you know, group activities, how well did, did that go and what do I need to do differently um, in the next class period. So basically instead of just letting the reflection happen, you want to plan for it to make sure that the reflection actually does happen. So you're just going to note where is the, uh, is the, are the students going to be reflecting and where are the teachers going to be reflecting. So I did not have time to fill out this whole unit plan. Um, I apologize for that, but um, hopefully this gives you a, a an idea of of how you would frame a unit based on on what I've put in here.